And can we just actually watch an ad reel? No, this is pissing me off. Here we go. I'm pushing play. Okay. And now it's really quiet because, uh, you know, life. Here we go. And if I close the mini player. All right. All right. I'm figuring this out. I'm figuring this out. Um, let's start that over. Okay, that's a decent place to stop and talk about some technique. So I've actually talked about Tom Barber on the channel multiple times, and when, when it comes to when it comes to deathcore, he he's actually one of my favorite vocalists, and for a couple of reasons. Right now, if you've seen me cover Chelsea Grin, or um, you know, we see if you've seen me cover Chelsea Grin or um, Darko, you know, you know that some of the things that he does that I really ad admire are, and this is one of my least favorite words in reviews, but a bit subversive. Whenever a reviewer is like, it subverts the genre, I'm like, oh, they didn't know what to say. Um, you know, but in, in a way, <laughs> in a way, on that. oh, I'm sure you do. But in a way, he kind of does, right? So, for example, a lot of times when you hear people talking about deathcore vocals that they like, right, they like a high vocal that's really crisp, really clean. His is very loose, very airy. He's got this, like, sort of false chord. Lie, the side, boo, the side, boo, the blah. Right. And it's really interesting and it really works well for him because and this is this goes this is really interesting. Something I was talking with my student with on yesterday. Right. Where he was like, I don't know how to find my own voice. I, you know, I'm working on all this music, but all I'm doing is trying to sound like somebody else. And one of the best things you can do to find your own voice, which I think like within Deathcore, Tom is a really good example of one of the people who has really found his own voice extremely well, is you do what's comfortable and you do what works for you, right? Um, a lot of times, and this is as a vocal coach and somebody who has built my career on metal vocals and kind of accidentally over the years, predominantly Deathcore vocals, because that's where a lot of like the um, exhibition of talent exists, right, is, is, is in Deathcore, right? One thing that I find frustrating about Deathcore is how much talk there is of good and bad vocalists, as if it's not like a completely subjective system, right? Really, if you like the way you sound, if your audience likes the way that you sound, and if you're not hurting yourself, I think it's I think it's a go, right? And Tom has really, I feel like, I could be wrong, I've never spoken with him before, but I really feel like while he was, you know, figuring out, um, while he was figuring out a lot of these, uh, a lot of these, these foundational screams that he has. I think he was just thinking about himself, thinking inward, and in a very good way because he sounds like Tom. Even his like lows and mids, right? He's got this really hollow but also very muffled sound, right? And you can do that with your false chord or your fry. You can take like like for me, I'm gonna do like a, a like a more tight like arytenoidal sound right here, like a. <laughs> And I'm pulling my tongue back in my mouth, and I'm actually not pressing against that vocal very hard. That starts like right? You know, I love, I love, yeah, Tom Baba. I love the way that his voice, to me, when I listen to him, I feel like he he really is focused on creating his own voice. Much of much of his vocal technique to me sounds so. Um, sounds so loose and relaxed and almost casual, right? Like he does like this sort of false chordy thing in a lot of his songs, where he's basically going like this, you know, top barber and top blah, and like that is extremely, um, extremely low pressure. It's it's very fundamental, but the way he delivers it, the way he articulates it, is is really engaging. So oftentimes especially these days as somebody who's listened to and cover a lot of death covered a lot of deathcore sometimes i find myself sort of drifting off as i listen to it 
and usually when I listen to Tom Barber's voice, I find myself a little bit more zeroed in because he's doing things very, very interestingly. That was a long segment, so we should do song, and then we can hear from this beautiful man up in the corner here because I'm sure he's got some things to say. Um, can I say one thing? You can. Um, so so deathcore nowadays is like you know sliding in like you know, a couple of different directions. You have our symphonic. Uh, slash black and whatever you want to call it, but it's basically power metal and deathcore. And then you have a, your kind of new metal influence stuff. And I think one of the interesting things about Darko uh, US is that uh, I feel like it really lets uh, Tom like spread his wings a bit more than like Chelsea Grin does in some respects. Um, and in particular, like his uh, his vocals uh, here have a little bit of that scatting energy that you would find in like Jonathan Davis from <laughs> Corn. Mm-hmm. Um and um but just kind of like death corrified. Uh and uh I think that's kind of cool because uh a lot of time like new metal like a lot of deathcore bands that are inspired by new metal are basically uh just kind of taking the riffing style and then maybe adding in some bad rap and um uh <laughs> And maybe riffing off some vocalists that are not very safe, like early Corey Taylor and stuff like that. So it's um, it's it's fun to kind of see that end of the spectrum be represented here as well. That's that's it. Yeah, it's 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 really cool. Let's keep going here. Let's keep going here. I'm really enjoying yeah. what I'm hearing so far. on earth this is sick this is really cool so I can see why friends become enemies it there i don't care so um there are a couple things here that i i find really interesting i want to talk about the singing technique and i want to talk about a couple other things so the first thing is um apparently tom has a beautiful voice who would have known i didn't know that um you know one one thing about my job is that most of the music i listen to is through work i don't really listen to a lot of metal outside of work doesn't mean i don't love metal it's just like you know when a chef comes home he probably doesn't cook dinner you know what i'm saying um <laughs> they probably they spend all day cooking a bunch of stuff they come home and they want to do something different right um so maybe tom has done a lot of clean singing on on uh, chelsea Green's music outside of this and i'm just this is the first time i'm hearing it but beautiful voice and this is a really great example of how you can do very simple things with your voice and 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 sound really effective um and have a really beautiful voice. Also, I totally agree about the PS2 booting sound. I totally thought like this sounds kind of like like the PS2 booting up at the beginning there. Um, 
So this is a really, really great example of, again, how we can make simple things work for us very, very well, right? And so <clears throat> what I want to talk about is if you were to approach a, a singing voice like this, right? If you were to like, you know, I want to have that sort of casual, uh, airy, yet, uh, yet still emotional, like pop singing voice, right? One of the best things you can do is keep your mouth and jaw really, really relaxed and hum into your lips, right? So I'm here, hmm, hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're going to find that spot that feels nice and buzzy behind your nose. You're going to find that spot that feels nice and bu buzzy behind your nose. And you're just going to then start doing like little mum, 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 mums, right? Very, very old school singing exercise. Old school, back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, hear how I've got a nice balance of airflow. There's no trick to this. I'm just using that same sigh into my lips. Mm, I can show you the world shining, shimmering, splendid, right? And there's not a whole lot you have to do to make that sound pretty good as long as you're not tense in the throat, right? And so that's really, really fascinating. Um, I also think that, like, it's interesting to me, and, and you, I'm sure you'll have uh, something to say about this here too, Quigs, but it's really interesting to me as someone who was growing up in a time when metal and pop were enemies, now seeing metal and pop be friends, um, it's really, really fascinating to, to hear how some bands are doing it. Be transparent. I think a lot of bands are not doing it very well. Um, but I think this is really good. One thing I really like is how Tom threw in some of his like mid low roars in there. And somebody mentioned it earlier in the chat. Um, I would agree. Um, to be honest with you, I think because I've been doing this long, so long, the, the, you know, pin the, pin the false quarter of fry on the vocalist has become a more boring conversation for me than anything. Um, but it is a valuable conversation sometimes. I would probably put, put put his highs at false chord and his mids and lows at fry. Again, that's probably a bit oversimplified. Um, but I love how he had that sitting in the mix back sort of at the end of that section. So a lot of bands, that what they'll do is they'll be like, this is our pop section. This is our heavy section. This is our pop section. This is our heavy section. And it kind of just feels like things being on the plate separate. Whereas it's harder to blend these sounds. And I think this is a really good blend. What do you think about that, Quigs? Yeah, I, I think what you said about most bands not doing it well, I, th I think one of the things, long story short, I think that um, most pop metal is written by people who primarily listen to metal and, only s and, uh, and listen to other pop metal and are just kind of like homogenizing each other and, and maybe they only cynically listen to pop or they think less of pop or whatever it may be. Um, when you look at like bands that actually have like pop DNA and then blend it with metal bands like, like Sleep Token or like other things like that, they really do create like a very different like sound um, that um, pop music is dope. Like basically like, 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 the right kind, like metal, like any type of music, there is good and there is bad. Um, and to a certain extent, it's very subjective. But I think that like you can, there is there is artistry in pop music. Like, oh yeah, in, you big know, time. There are some people who'll be like, no, never. Um, like for example, I'm seeing, and I think as well, people only have their own context to compare things to. I see a lot of people comparing this to Post Malone. Now, I'm actually a big fan of Post Malone, and I don't think this sounds anything like Post Malone. But it, but I understand if like you don't have uh, like a ton of context to like grab one to, you, your brain will make that connection. Um, I think um, like uh, I think this section is is decent. Uh, so full disclosure, I've heard this before. Mark hasn't, but I, I heard this before, and I actually I thought it was a decent attempt, but I didn't. Like, it didn't fully coalesce for me. Uh, I think it's better on re-listen. Um, and yeah, I, I do agree. It feels like the PlayStation loading sounds, everything like that. I, I think it's a step in the right direction. And I'm really interested to see where it goes. I definitely see... Like, the thing with vocal effects, as you know, because, for example, in Kardashev, you use vo you use a vocoder and stuff like that sometimes when you see Yeah, it, totally. Right? With vocal effects, there is a general... I think perspective that like oh well vocal effects do a lot of the work but honestly to make vocal effects work you have to have a, a unique and good voice underneath it that then the vocal effects kind of like enhance and augment and, and change 
So like, for example, um, you see a lot of people that maybe have like a, a pretty undeveloped but solid singing voice, like doesn't have a ton of personality, but like, hey, you can hit pitch and you can you can sing sing a phrase or whatever, like like kind of adding effects and then people going, oh, it's the same as, for example, someone like Post Malone, who's incredibly expressive and then uses a lot of effects. Um, oh, you know, someone like T-Pain, right? Who is a phenomenal singer, but uses a ton of effects as well. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think it's a decent blend. I, and again, as you know, I love contrast. Um, but I'm interested to see how they take these sounds at, into their future music. M like, more, if that makes sense. It does, yeah. I don't think this is the end of the journey. No, 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 no. Or no. if it I is, I'd be disappointed. I mean, we've been, we've pop pop and metal have been shaking their hands, you know, more more in the open. I mean, for like almost ten years now. Remember when uh, uh, Billie Eilish got had the metal metal logo beanie, and like a good portion of the metal community was up in arms. She's a poser, and yeah. I was like, shut up. Who cares? Um, let's keep going though. Let's keep going though, because we got we got. Uh, I think it's pretty much the end of the song, but. Uh, we got a little bit more time, I think. Here we go. Maybe you're right. That was sick. Oh man, you quiet. I, 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 I'm now actually disappointed you didn't dial it back a bit, and we get the full contrast. But yeah. <laughs> well, see, that, that's the thing with live reactions. In in a pre-recorded reaction, I can just do that and cut myself re rewinding. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I can't do yeah. that here. Um, so th I, I think that outro is exactly what we were talking about, right? They carried that that ambience. They carried that atmosphere through, and I love. Oh man! So anybody who knows me knows that knows that outros are my favorite part of any song. If the outro is good, it's my favorite part of the any, any of any song. And I love. So we had we had like this beautiful a uh, ambient section. Tom's doing like this beautiful singing. It's gorgeous. I love it. And then he comes back not only with harsh vocals, right? Because let's face it, in a genre as evolving and as maximal as deathcore. Harsh vocals are the bare minimum for creating heaviness, really, right? It's like, oh, this guy screams? Okay, so he's in the door. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, like, what he did is he, you know, he had these beautiful melodies, and then he brings back this rhythm. Ba, 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 ba. Like, basically just, like, punching you in the face relentlessly, right? And he was using a lot of these big, rounded vowels, right? So it wasn't like these tiny... Uh, like these tiny, like thin mouth shapes, which you can get really cool sounds from. You can do these really neat, like <laughs> like these types of vocals very, very easily, right? But with him, I think this it sounded like it was a very conscious choice. We had like ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. I'm just spitting everywhere, but that was sick. I love, I love how Tom's voice has a very stretchy, and I I know that like like that's kind of a hard sound to describe. I've tried to think, I've tried to describe this in multiple videos, but I've always kind of fallen flat. But it's like, if you were to stretch a material that like kind of stretches and pops, like uh, 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 like that sort of sound, like it has like this very predictable, yet also very messy, I know that's counterintuitive, like this <laughs> sound and it's so sick. But this is just an example of how mouth shapes can be a lot of your storytelling when you're doing metal vocals. You get your bare, you get your baseline tone. <coughs> mouth shapes from there, and 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 you have to be smart. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to do anything, but it helps to be smart about. Okay, and I think that this is this is one of one of Deathcore's one of Deathcore's current current things. It's sort of figuring out, right? I feel like Deathcore is um, kind of figuring out. A couple things but one thing is like okay how do we how do we stand apart from each other without just snarling over everything right and this was such a good example it reminded me of a band uh, uh that i love called aegean 
Aegean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who we take a lot of inspiration from. You have to mention Aegean every 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 six months. You got to bring back Aegean. Back I, I, if I don't, the FBI kicked down the door. FBI, open up! You didn't mention Aegean. Get out of here. Exactly. Um, that was sick. 